Hey gang, hello, welcome. Thank you for joining me today. My name's Dan. This is Daily Art Adventure number 853, where I am just doing a few finishing touches on this painting I did last week, and then I finished at a live function on Saturday evening. And uh, it sold, I re of course, I really don't, I don't have to do anything to the painting, it's, it's already done. But I've got it, plus I have a, my painters group tonight, my monthly painters forum, we call it. A peer review, peer, <laughs> peer review group that has been going on for um, 13 years, I think. And uh, so I, I want to take this painting, so of course I, I just want to I have the opportunity to touch it up. All right, let me talk about back up for a second. Stop, stop painting. Um, normally, and again, this is my my new normal in the last uh, fifteen months. Say, um, normally when I'm quote unquote finished a painting, the very last thing I do is is I want to give it one more glaze and. Uh, That's almost problematic in this painting, almost, almost, because the painting is, the color balance and the values are almost perfect right the way they are. So uh, ironically, I don't think I'm going to do, and, and it's this area I'm looking at mostly, I don't want it any darker, I don't want any lighter, I don't want it, I don't want it warmer. I don't, see these are the things I normally do with a final glaze. Normally I can look at it and go, oh yeah, if it was just a touch something. So we'll see. I might change my mind about that, but at the moment I like the way that is. Um, so really the only areas for, uh, for t that are high candidates for being modified is the sky. Um, I like the sky very much. Um, I just would like it to be a little cooler blue. So that's what I'm doing right now. I am doing a very thin glaze of um, ultramarine. And again, I, forgive me for repeating myself, but I know there's, there's always a lot of confusion among artists. I don't think there should be, but there is, about which blue is warmer and which blue is cooler. Uh, I don't have the energy to get into it right now, so <laughs> I use that excuse a lot. I repeat these things over and over and over again over the months. So just keep watching. You'll hear me explain on another day why it is that a purplish blue is cool and a greenish blue, right? You got blue in the middle, and if you go either way around the color wheel, it's either going get to get more red or more yellow, right, from blue. So if it, a little more red, that's purplish, a little more yellow that's greenish so a, a purplish blue is cool a greenish blue is warm and uh, if you're confused by that then I don't care <laughs> um, just learn it just remember it just believe me until the next time the, the day comes again I will believe me I will repeat it I'll explain at great length why a reddish blue is in fact cooler than a yellowish blue and there are some artists that are confused about that and I don't want you to be one of them anyway okay enough of that so I am I am making a mess um, I'm I'm adding a little bit of purplish blue ultramarine pure ultramarine is is in fact a purplish blue you understand all right so there's besides the glazes then Well, I'll, I'll continue. I'll continue. I'm going to come up and do more in the sky in a minute, but I'll go ahead and um, glaze. Now, as, again, as I said, this the middle of this painting to me is stands in an unusual condition of being uh, virtually perfect. Um, that is to say, I don't want it warmer, cooler, darker. Lighter is not an option when you're when you're glazing, of course. So I don't want to mess with this. But as I look at this, this over here, these buildings, 
in my opinion, can afford to be slightly pushed back just a tiny bit. Now you remember, well, maybe you, you didn't see me the other day. By the way, um, forgive me, I am flying again today blind. My iPad died on Saturday or Friday, whichever day it was, Friday. And uh, so I can't see your chats. Oh, let me move my phone so maybe I can catch some of them. So I am operating without a very key uh, piece of equipment that allows me to catch all of your chats uh, before they disappear. So I don't have that. So if I don't catch it during the five seconds that it's on my screen, I'm, I'm out of luck. I'm sorry. I did go back the other day and and uh, read through all of the chats that you guys have made on Saturday evening while I was painting. And I enjoyed that very much, but of course you can't comment on chats. All right, so I'm, I'm st I put a little bit of um, oxide red, which is brown, so, as, so we're not confused, right? Oxide red is a brown color, thank you very much. Um, uh, but it's mixed in with, I didn't clean my brushes, so it's brown plus blue. So it's a very, very neutral color. So just pushing these back just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. Again, very contrary to the photograph. See, here's the photograph. Hey, Uncle 60. Yes, I did. And by the way, I looked at my email and didn't find the follow-up that you had said might be coming, Uncle. Thanks for, I'm glad I saw that chat. Yeah, I, well, I'll tell you what, I already priced out a, um, you know, a, a Samsung tablet, and they're not very expensive, so the, the fundraiser shouldn't be necessary, but I can't do it right, right at the moment. So in the photograph, these buildings down here are very bright and light. See, this is why you don't copy a photograph. This is horrible. Um, look at the difference in value in my painting. Here's this building in the painting, here it is in the photograph. Um, because my painting, of course, follows all the rules of artistic composition. And I want, the focal point is right up here. It's just a center mass composition, which is one of uh, Edgar Payne's design stems. Um, so I did blue along the top, a little warm, a little, I mean, not warm, a little darkening over there. Oh yeah, and over here as well. Same thing, as I, just as I looked at it a while ago, I thought, oh, this, especially this row of, of uh, buildings, the, the faces right there can be darkened, but I don't want, I don't want this any darker. And I don't want that building, this is all dark enough. It would be a mistake, in my opinion, it would be a mistake to make it darker. There's just one tiny little bit of this focal area. It's this building right here that I think could stand to be slightly warmer. And it's way too dark, so bear with me. This is the fun part about glazing. It is so easy to remedy, so easy to undo. All right, that's better, that's better. All right, I'm not gonna do anything to that. Now, let's go back to the sky. And by the way, um, <laughs> I hate to be the bearer of complaining, um, but I am sitting down again because I'm still nursing, very much nursing a badly sprained ankle that happened on Friday afternoon. And believe it or not, my friends, I don't need to tell you all this, but you're my friend, so I'll tell you. On um, Sunday, I spent all day in bed asleep. I would just wake up on one couch and stumble to another couch or lazy boy and fall asleep there for another two hours and then wake up and stumble my way to another to my bed for two hour nap and anyway I was asleep all day Sunday. Yesterday was better. I was uh, in bed all day but awake in bed most of the day and today I thought I'd be back a hundred percent so some kind of weird flu that our youngest grandson brought into the house first um, has now been passed around everybody in the household except except my son-in-law Seth has had this bug so there we go All right now there is just a, a couple tiny little things 
uh, I want to do to this painting. One is, in spite of the fact that I like the sky so much, um, it is, in fact, a little bit too... The clouds, the white clouds, are a little bit too dark in comparison to the amount of light that is hitting the uh, buildings. Does that make sense? If there's that much sunlight hitting the buildings, then there's also at least... Okay, Uncle, I, got, I did see that about a downloaded e-card. I will look at it again. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, so I'm, go, I'm going to scumble in. Normally, scumbling is not a good way to finish a painting, but I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that I'm, I'm going to be doing such a little bit of it that I can get away with it. <laughs> How does that sound? Well, are you buying it? <laughs> So what I, in effect, have done then in the last several minutes is I darkened the blue. I, I glazed ultramarine. Then I, with a rag, I wiped off the clouds, and now I'm painting the clouds. So the effect is I've exaggerated the contrast in these clouds, which, which is, uh, you know, as I looked at the clouds, I thought, yeah, they could stand, I could, I could stand to, crank up the, the, the contrast knob on those clouds. So that is, in fact, what I'm doing. So I'm thankful. I'm, I've, I'm thankful to be vertical. Um, the last two days have been horizontal. Crazy. Uh, you know, we've been extremely healthy all this all this winter, not as so much as a sniffle. Well, so now we've joined the ranks of the merely human. <laughs> we get sick like everybody else. Hmm. Okay, I'm painting with my finger now. <laughs> Never paint with your fingers. <laughs> Fortunately, flat seed oil is a nutrient and so is titanium so not not too toxic flaxseed oil and linseed oil are the same thing by the way in case you didn't know that so you go to the health food store and buy flaxseed oil as a health food supplement and you go to the art store and buy linseed oil as a ingredient in your paint and they're essentially the same thing Um, let me talk about finishing touches. Gotcha. Thank you, Uncle. I saw that one too. About my iPad button. Got it, got it, got it. We'll do, right, instead of using the one with more, uh, with a higher charge rate. Great. Thank you. You're very kind. Thank you very, 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 very much. Um, let me talk about uh, finishing touches on paintings. I'm going to repeat something that I, I do say also pretty often. <laughs> I'm a man of few words. I just use them a lot. I just keep saying the same things over and over. But that's because people need to hear them. All right. Here it is. That, that if you are if you are stuck in tightville, if you're stuck in similitude, stuck in realism, stuck in similitude, stuck in realism, accuracy, then spending more time on a painting is is a counterproductive after a while because the painting will become overworked. All right. Whereas if a significant portion of the time you spend on a painting in fact does not serve realism but serves the abstract elements of design 
then time is not as much of a problem for you. Um, people often ask, how do you know when a painting is finished? And if they're an artist, they know that's a great question. If they're not an artist, they probably don't realize that is, that is in fact one of the chief questions always in the forefront of the mind of the artist is, am I finished? And uh, in my case, of course, since I have a, a, a set process that I go through to paint, step one, two, three, four, five, 20, 21, 22, whatever, um, that, that same question is simply spread out over each of those steps. How do I, how do I know when each step is finished? Each, each step of the process is finished, and that's still a very good. Be, because left to our own devices, mo the great, great majority of us, not all, but the great, great majority of us, myself certainly included, we will carry each step too far, or we will overwork a painting. If you don't know that, that that's an occupational hazard, well, you know it today. Um, overworking a painting is one of the most common, the most common mistakes that early journey painters make. Well, for that matter, it's one of the most common mistakes that late journey painters make as well. We all can fall into this trap of overworking a painting. So once again, let me repeat, especially if you're a realist, um, then it, then, or if all of your work at the end serves the purpose or the, the what's what I'm trying to say if all of your work is focused toward rendering then it's real easy to overwork if if on the other hand some of much of your work is extra realism that is besides beyond realism then you're not in quite as much danger still a danger but not quite as quite as dangerous as uh, the other so um that is what i'm trying to do now right at the moment having said that however i'm going to do a little bit of realism <laughs> i i just have a few little things that i want to do to this painting um one is at one point I thought it might be nice to have the hint of a yellow stripe down the middle of this road, and I, that just I, that's, I just overdid it right there. So let's let's see if if I can make it work with some. Maybe that might work now. Let's try it again. Let's try another spot right here. Okay, I just want a hint, and I like that all right, except that. I don't like the yellow cast that I've put onto the, uh, up here on the road. All right, so that's one thing that I wanted to add to this painting, very minor. And, and if I may point out, executed with aplomb. The word I'm saying there, again, forgive me for using words that normal people don't use very often. A-P-L-O-M-B means basically the same as sprecciatura, <laughs> but that helped you a lot. The looseness, the air of, of air of freedom, air of uh, almost nonchalant attitude. All right, that's enough. And the other, the final last thing I want to do, I, I realized this right at the end of the evening, maybe when I was packing it up in the van, I don't remember exactly, the other night at 11 o'clock at night on Saturday, was um, I have a little bit of taillights here on these two cars. Hey, Uncle. No, I, and I saw that, happily saw that chat as well. No events so far, no events canceled. Hello, Susan. Although, yes, um, I don't know if I told you guys yet, um, I was scheduled to begin painting a mural. Oh, that's, that's too exact. I was scheduled to begin painting a mural at a large 
corporation in the RTP, we call it here, the Research Triangle Park, just outside Raleigh. Lots of pharmaceutical, it's a pharmaceutical company. And um, I had to call them yesterday and tell them I was sick. And they called me back and said, <laughs> they said, you can't come in for two weeks. <laughs> and at first I was thinking that was just their normal policy. And then the other adults here in the house with me said, oh, no, no. That's no doubt is a coronavirus policy. I said, really? Oh, my goodness. Anyway, so um, I was planning to be very gainfully employed for the next six days. And now I am not gain, I, now I have nothing, so I'll, I'll be scrambling. I'll be scrambling to try to figure out some gainful employment because I can't go into paint my mural for two weeks. <laughs> so I guess that is, I guess that is coronavirus related. Um, I'm sitting back and looking at those headlights. I also want to make um, these taillights pop just a little bit more. Yeah, there we go. Also gives me a little excuse for for some spark, for some um, punctilier light, as I, as I like to call it, in here. Excuse me. I was just looking at the the logo. This the name of this these these two buildings is Citrix. S C I not S C I T R I X. And um, you might have heard them. Anybody? They're pretty, you know, big new, hot new tech company who built these uh, fancy new buildings and I just am making a modification to their logo I do not want this to be legible that's probably good enough I just want it to be so if somebody knows the name someone who were to know the name of the company, know the name of the building, which locals would, they could look at it and say, oh yeah, I can see, they can see the word Citrix in that. Now, let me go back up here to the sky. There's just possibly one more thing. It's a very small detail. And this has nothing to do with realism, similitude, accuracy, this is a abstract issue. Um, I did a pencil line. One of the, uh, I did several of them way at the end of the painting process the other day. And generally speaking, generally, generally speaking, I don't want my um, very abstract marks like pencil lines in the sky. I do a lot of abstract marks, of course. But I, generally speaking, I don't want any of them to be on the on the top layer, not for everything's going to be varnished. So this has nothing to do with um, archival quality or anything like that. Um, this has to do with what it looks like. Um, generally speaking, I don't want my abstraction to look like it was a. I don't want it to look like it was an afterthought and slapped on at the very end as an afterthought. So almost always, so I'm trying to match this color right here. Wow. Lucky me, I did a really good job matching some of it anyway. I don't know if you, you probably can't see what I'm doing. Here, I'll bring you in because this might be the last thing that I do today. Hang on, I'm going to get you the best angle possible. 
There, I right, think you actually can see that. All right, can you see this pencil line right here? There's, a, that, there's one there, and there's another one that goes off this way. Um, okay, so I need to make this slightly darker. Uh, so this is a very, this is a very idiosyncratic uh, Dan Nelson type of mark. You mean, you're more than welcome to copy it, but it, you, you don't. <laughs> it's not like a, it's not like a feature, a common feature in anybody else's painting that I know of. I have this, I'll call it a penchant. <laughs> I just have a, I really like doing this. I have a penchant for. Um, making very f any kind of abstract mark in my painting and then subsequent to that painting around it. So bear with me just a second. I'm going to do a similar kind of thing. Do you see this pencil mark that's coming off the side of the building right there? Same thing. I like it just fine. I like it being there. I don't want to obliterate it, but it's just a, it, it looks a little bit too much like the last thing that was done over here on this sky. And so I've just painted up to it, a little bit right over it. Okay, while I'm at it, I'm going to just do just a little bit more, move a little bit more to the right. There's another one right here. I don't know if you guys can even see that line. Can you see that pencil line? And the only reason I'm showing you all this is because this in fact is what I do. <laughs> Not all the time, but this is pretty much. Oh, Uncle, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm glad I caught that chat. All right, you guys, iPad fundraiser. Wow, I appreciate that. Thank you for considering it free, free art lessons. I certainly hope that's what it is. So thank you, Uncle, for that. Um, okay, so what I've done is, I, again, I'm trying to, in, in an opaque paint, I'm trying to match the color that's already there. Whoa. Lucked out again. Nearly perfect. Now, it can be, it can be slightly lighter than what's there. That's okay. It cannot be slightly darker than what's there. That is would not, that would not produce a, a pleasant effect. I don't know if, if you catch that, that's you get dark with lights, light, uh, light with opaques. That's that's Dan Nelson 101. And then, of course, I'll, I'll do a stroke across the pencil as well. So <laughs> this is all very. Very abstract and intuitive, really, really, really. Um, why does it matter? Uh, that that is vir that question virtually impossible to answer. Um, so intuitive, it just looks better. I'm, I'm having enough fun. And I keep saying I'm I'm all done, but then I think, well, maybe I'm going to do one more. Um, can you see the the very faint red pencil? Red pencil marks right in there and I'm trying to mix match the color again I'm, I'm boy I'm really I tell you I'm really knocking it out of the park today for matching color um, it does not always go this easily folks but I've just matched three three colors almost perfectly all right so same same principle here um, I don't want it to look like the, the, the abstract marks are slapped down as an afterthought. That's all. I think I've accomplished that. No. Hey, Uncle 60, I discovered, I'm glad I saw that chat too, but I'm doing pretty good at this. Um, yes, they're still out of those pencils, but um, you know, Saturday night at this big shindig uh, that I was finishing this at, uh, for the Visual Art Exchange. Um, the president of Jerry's Artorama was there. He usually is Ira. There's two, two brothers, Ira and David. Ira was there. And we had a delightful re reunion in chat. I haven't seen him for a couple years or no. Anyway, I haven't seen him much. 
I shouldn't say I have seen them. I haven't seen them much. Anyway, and I asked him about the pencils. And he said, turns out, guess what? They're not made in China. Guess what? They're actually made in um, Austria. <laughs> I mentioned this very briefly on Saturday night was I was painting. It was complete news to me, quite a surprise. Okay, by the way, I'm just looking at this red building right here and realizing, you know, I could I could stand to pop that that red just a little bit. It didn't have any sparkle in it. Now it does. All right, enough of the shenanigans. <laughs> what, I'm not sure. That's all I do is shenanigans. If I if I quit, what what else is left? Um, I think I'm done. Um, I, so I have my painters forum tonight. I just saw something that needs a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit of attention. Um, my painters forum tonight and tomorrow night I'm starting something that I'm very excited about, which I hope will be, include you guys some months from now, right? For years, I've, I've uh, been concocting this idea of a online painter's forum. I'm going to call it painter's critique so as not to confuse it with my painter's forum that we've already had going for a dozen years. Um, and we're going to start the pilot program t tomorrow night. And let me describe this for you real quickly, because eventually I, I want to open it up to uh, you people online. Here's what happens. Um, so tomorrow night is our first meeting, and I have six uh, paintings ready to go. I'm looking for two more, not from you guys, but I'll let you know. Um, artists email me a photograph of their painting. I tweak it in Photoshop, try to make it look as good as, you know, from what I can tell what I think it's supposed to look like. And I print out their painting on a small piece of canvas. In the future, I'd like that to be a bigger piece of canvas, but for now, it's just an F by 11 canvas. And then tomorrow night at this meeting, they all come and I give, I give feedback on their painting. I'll invite other people there to give feedback as well, but this is not a free for all. This is not a peer review group. This is a Dan Nelson re review group. And, um, and then I'm going to paint on their canvas painting to show my recommendations, show what I might do to help their painting be better. So that's happening tomorrow night. So I'm actually occupied two evenings in a row here. Um, and if it, so I'm going to work out the bugs before I, before I invite any of you guys online uh, to jump on board. We're going to try to get the bugs worked out without you. So be patient. And... Uh, that would be some that will be a paying proposition. I might do it completely separately from the local one. I don't know. I might do it in conjunction with the local one. Those things, those kinds of things yet to be worked out. But I am excited about that. And uh, based on the six paintings that people have already sent to me, it's going to be, for me, I think quite fun. Uh, number one, my number one objective will be to encourage the artist. That's that's the number one goal. In fact, I'll go ahead and tell you the first thing I'm going to say is, did you have fun doing this? And if they said yes, then I'll say that's good enough. That's all we need to worry about. That's the main goal for you is to have fun. Um, but would you like to get better? And if they say yes, then I say, well, here's some thoughts. Okay. Um, so that's tomorrow night. And as I said, I'm I'm excited about that. I do not not have an extra large printer. Um, Fredericks, the canvas company, F R E D R I X. Fredericks sells um, printable canvas sheets that go through a regular inkjet printer. And the, the, the color, you know, this is, this, uh, this is a regular, this is, you know, my inkjet printer on two sheets of paper taped together. Um, the color's kind of washed out. It, the color looks better on canvas. It's a little bit like photo paper, if you know what I mean. Photo paper, this would be really, Vibrant color, very intense. Um, so it's a, it's a, not a bad image uh, on on canvas. Um, anyway, thank you, thank you all for watching. Thank you, Uncle, for your encouragement and support, literally. And uh, I hope this will, this will be it today. I hope to broadcast again tomorrow. Yeah. 
and I hope you can join me then. Thanks. Bye-bye.